Grotebois. So this is a deeper dive on the big news that the Federal Trade Commission just banned non-competes. So let's talk about the, the scope of the ruling. So the Federal Trade Commission regulates trade and for the first time in about 50 years, they've actually made a rule that affects all businesses. Normally up till now, they've just been going after people that they suspected of unfair trade and they would go and prosecute a business for doing things that were unfair. But now they're making a rule. And so the rule is the following. All employees and even independent contractors, so workers writ large, who have an agreement that includes non-competition language, often called a non-compete clause, is null and void. Um, with a couple exceptions. One exception is C-level executives that have an existing non-competes. They can still be bound by that non-compete. However, new C-level executives cannot be bound by a non-compete. And um, partners in a business, they can still be bound by a non-compete. Um, the buying and selling of a business, so a lot of times when a business owner sells his business, they'll, they'll bind that person to a non-compete, that's okay. Um, but more or less, the, the, unless this is challenged, and by the way, I say unless this is challenged, the ruling came out two days ago. Yesterday, the Chambers of Commerce sued the, the Federal Trade Commission in federal court in Texas to try to have this overturned or at least held up. But here's what the rule says. The rule says that once the rule is published in the Federal Register, so the Federal Register is a publication. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's crazy, it's huge. It's all the proposed rule changes in the federal government. It's also where, by the way, they include all of the proposed trademarks and that allows people to open what's called the opposition period to a trademark. It's a different video, but in any case, the Federal Register is published four times a year and in the Federal Register, it has all the new rules. So once this rule is published, whenever that is, there will be 120 days until the rule goes into effect. Within that time period, every employer who has employees or workers who are bound by a non-compete that will no longer be bound by a non-compete, the employer has an obligation to notify all the workers. So to tell the workers, hey workers, you had a non-compete, but now it's not in effect anymore. And so this is huge. So let's talk about generally how non-competes work. So non-competes have three levels. There's geography, time, and the actual prohibited activity. So very common in a lot of industries. Ironically, lawyers can't be bound by non-competes and it's not for the benefit of lawyers. Believe it or not, it's considered for the benefit of the general public. I can imagine a fact pattern where one law firm will hire every lawyer in town, make them all sign non-competes and then fire them all. And then there'll be no more lawyers in town, right? I mean, it's obviously uh, an attenuated fact pattern, but so doctors are often bound by non-competes. So if you think about it, a hospital could hire every doctor in town, make them all sign non-competes and then fire them all. And now the public is gonna be restricted in its access to doctors, but I guess that's less important than access to lawyers. I don't know, I can make an argument either way. So the, the, it's time, rule of thumb is five years or less is generally enforceable. Um, I often see 24 months, 36 months. There is geography. So I've seen worldwide, which is obviously a little extreme. I've seen United States, I've seen state of Florida, I've seen Miami-Dade, Monroe and Broward County, and I've seen within five miles of the principal place of business, right? And then the activity. So the, typically the activity, if it's broad, is anybody that would be competing with our company. Or it could be more narrow, such as IT services or providing medical services, right? And so that is something that can be uh, crafted and sculpted. And so these clauses often go in conjunction with the other restricted covenants. Now it's very important to note, the FTC did not touch on any of the other restricted covenants. So what are those other restricted covenants? The, the most important, for my opinion, is non-solicitation. So that just says, don't go after my customers. Non-interference, on your way out the door, don't try to get everybody else to quit like Jerry Maguire did. Um, Non-disclosure, which is confidentiality. Non-disparagement, don't go around town and talk bad things about your former employer. And so there are lots of restrictive covenants that are gonna survive this and that are gonna become more important and they're gonna be more enforced. And so I think that the non-solicitation, I've even seen it where they'll have a list of customers attached as an exhibit to the contract and say, you can't work with these customers after you leave our place. Or it could just be broad, any customer that has been a customer of the, of the company for five years. So guys, this is really important. There's gonna be updates, there's gonna be legal challenges. I'll probably do more videos. Um, we're already doing blogs and we're going to do a webinar in a couple weeks. So stay tuned. And if you have questions or concerns, or if you have a non-compete that you're worried about, or you are an employer with non-competes, just leave a comment below.